With both tickets now seemingly set, the countdown is on until Election Day. Vice President Kamala Harris and her newly announced running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, are now embarking on a big swing state tour this week. Meanwhile, GOP vice presidential candidate Senator J.D. Vance is making several campaign stops this week, and former President Donald Trump will hold a rally Friday in Montana. For a breakdown on the campaigns, we're joined via Zoom with the founder and CEO of the Magnolia Tribune, Russ Latino. Russ, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Hey, Russ, a recent NPR PBS poll shows Harris has a small lead over Trump. She gained some ground after Biden dropped out. Should Trump be worried or is this just a honeymoon period for the Democrats? Yeah, I mean, I think looking at the polling right now, it would seem like Vice President Harris has momentum. Uh, it remains to be seen how much of that is sort of the newness or freshness of her coming on the scene and the way that she came on the scene. Uh, but certainly, if, if you're in the Trump campaign right now, you've got to realize that the race has dramatically changed from the race you expected to have against Joe Biden. Russ, both Trump and Harris chose VP candidates from the Midwest. Now, what does that mean for their campaigns? It strikes me that, that both of the presidential campaigns are leaning into their base with their VP picks. Sometimes in elections, you will see presidential candidates pick vice presidents that sort of speak to a different audience than their existing base. It seems like with both Waltz and with uh, J.D. Vance that they're kind of leaning into their existing bases. In terms of what it means for the swing states, uh, Minnesota really wasn't up for grabs. Democrats probably were going to win Minnesota with or without Tim Walz. Ohio really wasn't up for grabs. Republicans were probably going to win it with or without J.D. Vance. I think the theory of the case is that both of them might be able to help in states like Wisconsin and Michigan, which are a part of a handful of states that ultimately are those swing states that are going to decide the election. Yeah, the southern border is a hot topic in this race, and according to a recent uh, CBS poll uh, right now, the Americans believe that Donald Trump can decrease the number of illegal migrants crossing. Uh, why didn't Harris pick someone from one of the border states, you believe? Yeah, you know, I'm not privy to kind of what they went through in terms of their internal selection, but I, I would have to believe that it came down to, one, who do we think will excite our base? Two, who is closest to the swing states that we think we have a good shot at winning? Certainly Mark Kelly in Arizona probably was on that list in part because of the issues on the southern border. I do think that's a liability for Vice President Harris, though. If you looked at the numbers, uh, both when President Biden was still running for re-election and even after, even with the momentum that Vice President Harris has gained, what you see is that they, they are really uh, trailing on that issue of who can protect the southern border. Russ, Waltz made headlines earlier by calling Republicans weird. It's a simple attack, I guess, but it's gained traction. How can Republicans push back against that attack? I think it's kind of a goofy attack, to be honest with you, and, and, and I, would, I would say that if it was coming from Republicans as well. I, I would like to see the political discourse in this country and on a smaller scale in our, in our backyard in Mississippi <laughs> improve. I think there are a lot of really important issues that folks should be focused on. I mean, people are paying 30% more for groceries than they were four years ago. You do have this question about whether or not our southern border is secure. You've got crisis breaking out all across the world. I think as a voter, what I want to hear from both candidates is what they plan on doing on those issues and a little bit less of the cheeky sort of pokes back and forth. The, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of weird stuff that happens across the political spectrum. Uh, that may be one of those uh, not casting stones at glass houses moments. Russ, we have 90 days to go right now. How close is this race going to be at the end of the day? I think it's incredibly close because you've got largely voters saying that they're locked in on who they're going to support. And so it's going to come down to a couple of percentage points of, of independent voters and a handful of swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, that ultimately decide this election. I think if you're Vice President Harris, you have to be uh, excited about the rollout and sort of the momentum that, that's building. But anybody that's pulled out their crystal ball and told you how it's going to turn out in a few months is, is not uh, being honest because there's been a lot of chaos in the last few weeks from a, a flub debate attempt to a failed assassination attempt to a brand new candidate 
And I think we're kidding ourselves if we think that it's not going to continue rain down. Dramatic turns in this race uh, that could end up swinging that couple percentage points. So I think it's going to be a race to the wire. The only thing I would say, Byron, uh, to folks listening is remember that whatever you say and do now uh, will be with you at the end of November. So so behave accordingly, right? There's a there's a lot of tension right now around politics. <laughs> it looks like it could be like an Olympic race. Whoever has that little lean at the end of the finish line might get through it, right? <laughs> I think that's right. right. I think that's right. Russell Tino, thank you for joining us.